start with the things I thought we did well, you know, continue to do some good situational things. Red zone in particular was, you know, at, at times uh, was good for us. We played some good third down defense again at times. Uh, we turned the ball over, uh, took the ball away, which was great. But the theme of all that is it wasn't consistent enough, and that was our defense in general last year is just consistency or the lack thereof. So, um, you know, the obvious is the the run defense and the explosive runs and passes. So that's something that will be uh, continue, continually addressed as we go forward, forward through the uh, preseason and uh, offseason here. How do you see building the interior defensive line, Lou? What's the object there and what's the formula? Well, I just think we keep, you know, uh, as a position that I think you just keep always, you're always adding youth and uh, uh, strength to that position, you know, whether it comes in free agency or the draft, you know, that stuff will all be played out. But uh, <clears throat> I think it's something that you're always adding to. Young guys on the back end, how do you think that they – when you, you went back and look, how do you think that they did? Obviously, you have a lot of youth back there. Yeah, I, I think they played like young guys. And, um, you know, we all wanted it to be better players, coaches, uh, for sure. Again, there was there was things that were really good um, at times, but it goes back to it was, just wasn't consistent enough. And, you know, next year will be better for sure. What's Dax's spot next year? Is he safety or, are you, or is that something that you're? Into yeah, I mean, we're still looking at everything. I think we look at not just Dax, but everybody last year. When you have a year where it wasn't quite up to standard, I think it's just something that you evaluate and, hey, is this guy going to be better here or there? But not not anything in particular there. Just keep working he can, on it. He can do all of it, so it gives you, it gives you the options of considering things, I guess, right? I mean, well, because he's so freaky yeah. physically, you know. Yeah, I think he, you know, it's. You got to—he's got to be good at one thing, and so um, that's what we're we're working on now is being good at one thing. So, how important? The one how, how important is that for a young guy to have him in the one spot? You know, he's athletic to maybe try all these different things, but to get him to be a master at one. Person. Well, again, I think it's a. Let's let's go back a little bit. You know, he's still a young player in a lot of regards. It was only his second year. Played a handful of snaps his first year. Um, so I think his development and his upside is still huge, and nobody's down on the guy at all. Uh, I just we just have to make sure that he's honed in and making sure he's uh, uh, be, being able to do the things that we're asking him to do, wherever that may be. Can he be a safety, or is he just so good where he is that? Yeah, you hate to. He's such a dominant player. Uh, he he does some safety jobs for us on different down and distances. But to say he's a full-time safety, you know, Mike's a, one of the best nickels, if not the best nickel in the league. So I don't want to, I don't want to tinker with that too much. When you guys went to the Super Bowl before Larry got hurt, you know, you guys were able to see what three top interior defensive linemen can do and the difference it can make. You know, those are typically very expensive positions. Do you feel like? In the last couple of years, you, you might have seen the fact that like maybe you guys don't just need one or two, but you had DJ and BJ, but you really need that third person to either be to take snaps off BJ or just to generate more. Yeah, I think it's a great, a great, uh, great point. Um, you know, you look at the teams that go far. You know, obviously, great quarterbacks, but. Dominant defensive lines are kind of a theme as we look forward. So we've got pieces in place for sure. And, you know, as you mentioned that year, it was great to have Larry and the, the, that, that rotation of three. And really Josh would come in and he was the fourth and, and would rotate with those guys. So, yeah, the more the merrier. If we had a D-line, uh, D-tackles, I'd be uh, I'd be a happy guy. How much do you need a, uh, a kind of a, 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 somebody who's in interior, whether it be that, that one or the three tech, like in those spots, be able to go upfield and rush the passer and really collapse the pocket? Is that kind of a necessary thing? Well, I think it, it'll just continue to you go back to 21, like Kelsey just said. Um, you know, I think Larry had seven, seven and a half sacks maybe that year. And um, Sam had a, a, a bunch of sacks. Trey is always going to have a bunch of sacks. <laughs> but that inside uh, pressure can just force it back to those guys and make it even easier. So, um, and then in our our division in particular, when you have a presence inside, where a lot of those quarterbacks like to scramble, uh, that can you know maybe uh, make that a little bit uh, tougher for them as well. So, we're always looking for that.
as far as overall pass rush? Do you think Miles Murphy is on the right track to contribute even more? I do. I do. I th you know, you, you see strides with the guy. You see his development um, not only as a, as a rusher, but also uh, as the year went on as playing the run game. And uh, so I was happy with where he was at. And hopefully, you know, we'll see um, not only Miles, but Joseph. Uh, Joseph's not rehabbing anything this year, and he's in there every day, um, every day. Uh, just working on different things, so I'm anxious to see a healthy Joseph Osai as well. Do you feel like you need to add a veteran safety to your room? Um, I think that's always a, a conversation that's ongoing because, you know, as we know, it's something that when things can go sideways a little bit, uh, it usually starts back there with communication and um, the, the guys that have done it and have experience can always add to that. It's just a fine line of how it all fits with the whole picture because you start talking about veteran safeties and oh, by the way, the third safety has to play a lot of special teams. And so, um, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a balancing act, but everything's open on, or on the table right now. What kind of step forward can Jordan Battle take in Position. Well, I think he, he can now go out there and know that he's kind of uh, played effectively, uh, you know, for a number of snaps. Um, still got a, a long way to go, but at the end of the day, there's things that he's done well, and I think he should and will take the next step from all of that, you know, whether it's leadership, communication, uh, and just continuing to hone his game on different things as well. What did you see in terms of his growth? Significant, I assume, in the, from the first half to the second half of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think having a better feel for what we want, what, what, we, what we want out of him and his position, uh, the expectations that he has for not only himself, but, um, you know, for the rest of the defense and that back end where, you know, it clearly wasn't good enough. Um, last year, I think he's one of those guys that kind of uh, looks to me as saying all the right things about putting it on his shoulders to improve next year. When you look at the explosives, Lou, is that uh, is it is it youth? Is it scheme? Is it play calling? Is it is it what do you think? What do you? <laughs> um, it's a combination. You know, you, you know, you you just on every defense we have and put out there. Um, you know, I've, I've said to you guys a million times, there's there's not a, a defensive scheme that we have that says, all right, leave that guy open, you know, uh, or don't cover that gap. <laughs> so we're always, you know, got our, you know, T's crossed, I's dotted, all that stuff. Um, so I think when things break down the way they did last year, it's, it was a lot of it was the second half of the play where we kind of just lost who we were covering. Um, had a missed tackle at the point of attack. You know, a lot of our rushing yards, um, I want to say we faced 30 more runs than we did in 22 and in three less games than in 22. So we got more at bats against the run. And I want to say there was over, I don't know the exact numbers, like 296 yards after first contact. So you're, you're talking about almost three more games of rushing yards just on a missed tackle or, you know, we hit the guy and he falls forward for three, four, or five. So too many of that, too many of those things last fixable, year. Fixable, fixable specific. Yeah, well, they're all fixable for sure. Um, so I think there's a lot of elements to it. And, um, you know, we got our arms wrapped around it and got to make sure it doesn't happen Sorry, again. I didn't mean play calling. I guess I meant communication. No, but I guess I meant communi <laughs> but I guess I meant communication. But You're you dealt with it. You're the first one to question my play call. <laughs> no, I meant communication, which you dealt with. A hundred percent, yeah. And, and to your point, the communication part of it um, is something that, I, that, you know, I'm not the only coach standing up here saying we have to have great communication on defense. And it has to, has to improve. Um, you know, it's got to sound like the locker room when we're out there on defense. It's got to be loud. Uh, it can't be, you know, like these guys are these days where they just take their phones out and nobody's talking to each other. <laughs> it's got to be the bus in the locker room, loud. That's what I want. How confident are you that Jordan can get the most out of the young safeties? Uh, I'm super confident. Uh, love Jordan. Uh, been with him, you know. I was screaming at him as a player. Um, did you guys interview him today? Okay, ask him about specifically Tennessee Titans, Dolphins against the Titans. It's the end of the game. We're beating, beating the Titans pretty good that day. Um, and Jordan went out there at safety. And just ask him what happened at the end of the game. It would be 2015. 
2015. <laughs> Just ask. I'm trying to ask you if any. I guess that's what would stand out from his playing career for you. Well, he's this. No, this guy is. Uh, think about Jordan's path and his career as not only a a coach but a player and and who he is as a as a human. I mean, the guy was a walk on at Michigan, earned a scholarship, and oh by the way, was a captain. Came to Miami, and when we first got there, um, we did a lot of uh, two split station like drills. So team was going on here. There was another set of team drills going on on the other field. And when that happens, you know we're stretched thin. There's not a lot of backup. So think about Miami in July and August, okay, where you walk outside and you're sweating. Imagine trying to practice football. This guy never came off the field. Ne- did extra sprints like you just. He willed his way to make the team, okay, as an undrafted free agent. Uh, I think we gave him about 25 bucks and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich to come. Um, and the guy just has never stopped. And so when you when you have that internal drive as a as a person, he's he's going to succeed in everything he does in life. I, I love Jordan. He's great. Do you feel like the Packers maybe took a step back last year? Or how would you? How do you feel like they played? I just think. They're in line with everybody. I think that we all didn't do well enough last year. So to just pin it on one group, I would say that wouldn't be fair. If you asked Logan and, and Jermaine, they they would say that, hey, we, we've got to play better. Uh, and, I, and again, I think that's every every level of the defense, not just those guys. And again, those guys had some really, really good games, you know, like all of us. Um, but um, it wasn't consistent enough. It's been a while since needed a starting nose tackle. I mean, because DJ's been here basically since you got here a year after. Oh, he's still here, right? Technically? Technically. <laughs> but he's scheduled to become a free agent. Obviously, his health sucks up in the air. Do you feel like that's a position because it's so important in your scheme that you need a veteran rather than well, I'd rather go, you know, you'd always rather go with, hey, here's what I see. They've done it at this level. Uh, you know, DJ um, is is a hard guy to replace. Uh, and hopefully we don't have to. But um, he is uh, he's such a great locker room guy to start with. Um, and then just what he does inside <clears throat> in the interior of the defense, um, he just controls blocks. It's a lot of things that people don't see. You can't look at DJ Reader in that position and say, let me look at his numbers. Uh, even though he has you know, good numbers for the position, he is just dominant when it comes on to taking on blocks, taking on double teams, and not getting moved. And um, that allows other people to make plays. And when you don't have that, it creates other issues. How complex, complicated is that situation with DJ, given the injury? Um, I, you know, I know he's another guy that's been in there every day working hard, and, uh, you know, I don't know the exact timeline uh, yet, but I'll let the let Duke and his crew work that out, and hopefully it works out good for us. As you start going through the process, some of the draft, the kids, defensive tackle in particular, mm-hmm. is when you're in this division, what you need is size one of the top of the kind of non-negotiable or power at least inside there for you? You know, because you'll see a lot of these undersized guys, you can maybe sell it, but is that for well, you? It's a good question because, you know, like when we watch the, when I watch the free agents um, that are in the league now, I hope and pray that they've played against our division because I'll go right to the Baltimore tape, I'll go right to the uh, Cleveland tape, right to the Pittsburgh tape because when they're playing that those group of teams, it's a little bit different than a lot of the other teams in our league where these guys are roaring off the ball, double teams, big people, and trying to knock you to next week. So uh, if you can't anchor in there and you can't, if you're going to get moved and you're going to try to swim around blocks, that, that creates, uh, again, different issues for us on defense. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit different in the AFC North. Is, is there a guy you're maybe hoping to see, it might be a young guy you're hoping to see make a big leap next year? Uh, from what he showed last year? Um, I, yeah, I want to I want to say and that not necessarily I'll put like everybody in the first three years of their career in that. So, you know, Jordan, uh, Dax, DJ Turner, uh, Miles. I still put Joseph in there because of his uh, health uh, issues that he's had. So all those guys in there need to step up and, and play well next year. Is that, is that basically going to be the determining factor you think of, on how good that defense is going to be next year is how well they come over? I mean, I think it's going to be it's going to be everybody um, because it always is. But those guys will 
if they contribute um, the way they, the way that I know they can, I think we'll be back on the right track. Turner, just, Turner started so fast. Did was that just kind of a thing where guys hit the rookie wall a little bit at the end, or just got it? Just it was a long season. I think Mike Mike Hilton hit that one on the nose when he said he didn't hit the uh, rookie wall. Uh, I think he the, the rookie wall hit him. Yes. So um, <clears throat> I I, th I do think that he. So I'm still in Mike's line there, but yeah. uh, he did have a strong training camp, uh, came out and started pretty good. But, uh, you know, again, I'll use it again. I know it sounds boring, but the consistency wasn't there and, and needs to be better. Third corner would seem to be, uh, t you know, backing up TJ and Cam. Uh, DJ, I mean, I guess DJ's a starter now, right? I mean, he's well, I look at I look at the NFL these days. Is th there needs to be three starting corners? You have to have three uh, at the very minimum. Um, you know, and uh, we've done a good job. Chuck's done a good job developing that group. You know, I thought DJ Ivy had to come in for some snaps and unfortunately got hurt. But the first play he's out there, I, I think it was against Minnesota, and they run a double move on him, and he's like on it, like it was, you know like it was nothing so uh, I think you need at three minimum uh, and you look at as starters and then you kind of go from there yeah. uh, I think we do as a general rule when you're preparing for these some of these elite quarterbacks to face them yeah. when they have explosive run games to lean on as well how hard does it make it to prepare for those types? um you know I think anytime you uh, a team has the element of a run game um, you know, where you've got to now just think of the, the simplest things you've heard, right? Where all right, we've got to outnumber them in the run game uh, to, to help stop that. Well, then that leaves people one on one on the outside. And when they have, when you have, you know, a Patrick Mahomes or any of the elite quarterbacks that we have to play, Lamar, um, all those guys, Josh Allen and, and so on, but um, it, it, you're going to leave yourself a little bit lighter somewhere. And you just got to try to, pick and choose when you do that and what spots and um, so it, it, it certainly makes it a little more difficult. I feel like you guys as an organization I mean I know there's only so much you can do when you have to pay a quarterback and a receiver like some of the decisions that you guys have to make. Do you feel like as an organization you guys learned a lesson in what happened with your safety position last year and I mean you famously said it would be a dark day if we lost both of them and then you did and the group took a pretty significant step back. Do you feel like you guys learned a lesson in, in maybe trying to not lose both at positions where you can? Yeah. Like I don't, you know, we never really sat down and said that. Um, I just think, you know, it's just, you had a unique group, um, you know, and those guys worked together so well. And so it was such a significant impact when you went from new player to young player from veterans really really good players uh, that knew exactly what I was thinking and what the team was thinking so it was a little bit of a u unique situation that way uh, but I think every year we're always learning something one way or the other so yeah we'll to, see to Kelsey's point I think Duke said the other day what he learned from the Vaughn and Jesse's situation is sometimes you have to reboot as a defensive coordinator yeah. do you ever think about having to start all over or at least reboot what you're doing? Well, um, I, I just think you're driving back home and you're maybe not, you know, where you might have been starting here, the 22 training camp. Well, now you're starting down here just from a, hey, all right, here's how we want to do this and here's how we'll play that route where maybe those two guys would have been like, yeah, what are you talking about, coach? We got that, you know, so you just... You just, but that's that's this league, and it's not. We're not unique to this. We're not unique to uh, losing players and free agency or whatever it may be. So, um, you know, we just have to do a better job next year. You guys have gone light in OTAs. How valuable would would more team periods be to to get the safeties some, some more time on mm -hmm. task together? Um, I mean, well, I think the way Zach has done it has been great for our team, just because we've played until February. Right. Um, the previous two years and you know these guys are all banged up from a long season and um, I think that toll uh, that it takes on a team to start right again what is that like a, a month and a half later whatever you know is a lot so um, yeah we'll, we'll see I mean I think it can help always more practice reps helps but uh, I think we've had the exact right approach in the past um, so um, we'll, we'll, we'll get some more 
we'll just be better at what we do. It's not about doing more. I think it's just being about better what we do. Still have some great other guys there. I mean, you're talking about Sam Hubbard and, and uh, you know, Trey and B.J. Hill. Those guys are, they're not going to walk lightly through the locker room. You know, everybody, you know, and then the back end guys with Mike and Logan and Jermaine. So we've got, we've got leadership, but it's a little bit different when D.J. says something. You know, what was that old commercial? When, yeah. Yeah. Everybody listens. Yeah. Um, and he's been there. He's done it. He's done it at the highest level. He's been one of the best at his position uh, in the league. So let's uh, let's hope he stays with us. Since Trey doesn't really know a lot of media, we don't really know a whole lot about him. Right. Hendrickson, yeah, he doesn't really. We, just, we really know nothing about him. Yeah. So what's he like, kind of as a leader in that way? Like, how how is he like? That yeah, he's been great. Uh, you know, Miles and Joseph will go to him. Uh, matter of fact, Trey uh, is in there every day and. Joseph, they're sit right next to each other, just you know, talking about things, and you know, he was talk, he talks to Miles all the time, and um, he just he has his own way about going about his business, um, and his business is about being the best player he can be, making sure we're the best team we can be, uh, and hurt, helping those younger players develop, because uh, he knows that can only help us when he's him and Sam are getting a rest, you know, these guys that we put out there. Um, you know, he's got to be so he, he does so many different things that people don't see. And, uh, you know, did I did I read right that he wasn't a first or second team all pro? I was just wondering if anybody that's ever had 17 or 15 plus sacks, I, I wonder if that's ever happened. Like I said, he doesn't do a lot of these. But... Yeah, that's crazy. He's a great player. He is a tough division. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Probably a top two edge rusher in the entire league. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, it's like every game he's going to impact the game somehow, some way. And, and it's like all those great rushers where it could be a holding call, could be a false start that he causes. Um, you know, the, um, the, the way the protection is going to go, which frees up some other things for other people. So um, when you get guys like that, it, it, it really affects the opposing team. On the other side, you've sung Sam's praises often, but why is he such a good fit for what you like to do? I mean, you guys, he's obviously been just what you felt like you needed. Yeah, I just think he can do so many different things. Um, I think you'll see a healthy, um, re-energized, not that he ever lost his energy, uh, but rejuvenated Sam Hubbard. You know, he's a true warrior, old school, all those terms that you want to throw out there. Uh, basically playing on one leg last year so um, you know and he never wanted to come off the field uh, and he'll be back with a vengeance this year like we all will be.